Hi, here we are at Clark Auction, another preview, another sale, this time June the 30th, Sunday, June 30th. Sale starts at 10 a.m., previews three days prior, noon to six, but if you want to, you can come now because we're all set and ready. We have a great selection this time, a pile of merchandise, merchandise from all over America. We even have from Miami, we drove down there, swam and picked up an estate. Anyway, starting off, we have this wonderful pair of large bronze, gilt and patinated bronze candelabra. Look at the eagle top and the figure, but beautiful quality, nice large size. Sitting atop a pair of enameled metal with uh, travertine top, mid-century style side tables. Here we have a nice, wonderful pair of Mars, uh, Mies van der Rohe Barcelona chairs. We believe they're from the 60s, came from a Queen's estate. Here from Floral Park in Long Island, this is actually 74 inches, so it's longer than the usual one. We weren't able to find one this size. It's a uh, Philip and Kelvin Laverne Chan table, wonderful condition. Family purchased it directly from him. Uh, it is signed, I'm just looking here to see the signature, but uh, if you go on our website you will see that it is, oh, right here. Signed and in wonderful condition and from the same, sitting above it in the same estate was the mirror. Quite rare to find this mirror, so we're happy to have this, these two amongst a lot of good mid-century. This table here is signed Singer, look at the nice uh, metal inlay on it, it's a flip top table, opens up, so it could be a nice smaller size view. We believe it's by Gio Ponti. Either side we have a pair of after uh, Robes John Gibbings chairs, all from a collection in New Jersey. Great quality. After the artist, this is after Gio Ponti, but really well made. Nice patina, pair of nice side tables there. Over here we have after Vladimir Kagan. This here is solid bronze, very able. We sold, recently sold a wonderful sculpture by Higuili. This is after Philippe Equili, so here from the Miami estate, I believe it's by Fontana Art, nice with a beautiful glass shade. The woman represented Vanini in America, so we have a lot of her stuff. Here, a nice classical bronze sculpture down here for our decorators. Okay, into the main room. Look, we've got vintage clothes and everything, so any of you clothes buyers should check out the site because it came in late. We have these, uh, I believe they're Lucci sconces, beautiful leaf scorn form sconces, mid-century style. Wonderful thing. We have uh, art glass lighting, lots of it. We have a lot of Vanini in the sale from Miami. This is a grouping of Vanini here. For your mid-century lighting enthusiasts, keep an eye on the site because there's some great lots of lighting rare for all from Miami. This is one grouping here. Also, we have in the sale a set of these, which are from Artelucci Triennale lamp, never open, nice gray. And we have the base of the Triennale lamp. Unfortunately, we didn't find the lamp down there. Okay, moving right along, we have KPM style lamps, Brutalist style, Murano. Here, this sculpture is quite rare. It's an abstract sculpture by an artist called Kenneth Snelson. Fresh from an estate. We have two Dale Julie, this is one of them. Art glass, Tiffany, beautiful Tif Tiffany Bell form lamp there. Below here, Louise Nevelson, nice bronze sculpture, back in the sale by a non pair. Hope we put his name in the site. We have this, uh, we have the standing lamp up further, it's Fortuny. Once again, we have a skull, we seem to be the sale of skulls here. This is signed, it's Italiano. Someone told me he's an Irish monk, but there you go. What was he doing in Italy in those days anyway? Below here, another. Uh, Dale Chihuly, wonderful colour on that. A lot of Vanini to the right of it. Here we have, uh, up here I'm brushing my poor cameraman here, Brutus lamp, bronze sculpture. Below we're going back into the cases now. We have these are a collection of bunnykins. This is a beautiful little Emile Galley scent bottle. We have three of these by Peter Bramel, came from a local estate, but nice big size this one. I believe the other one's lotted in a pair. Fornacetti plates, Baccarat. Royal Worcester, look at the size of this, big large size. Bronze Eagle after many, I believe we've got lots of clocks, Kenny will get to those. Over here we have more Royal Worcester, we have Mizen. This is a beautiful and good, good size little Favril vase with a lid on it here. It possibly says, but really wonderful quality with the helmet and the birds and the nice gilding on the bronze. We've got French clocks. This pair of lamps are pretty rare. Once again from Miami, this Italian glass, more clocks down below which Kenny will get to. The sculpture here is very interesting. 
these guys lift off, but it's a good big size, super duper quality unsigned. We'll check into that at ClarkMI.com. Mid-century furniture, we have rakes of it. We have this mid-century set here. This here is by Falster. We have quite a few pieces of this. We have this one, the shift robe. We have tambour front side table. It's really wonderful condition, straight from the estate. Lots of flush mount lighting here. This is Falster again. Up here, a very interesting lot for someone who wants to build a chandelier or whatever they want to do. We have a big collection of Vanini art glass shades. Two box loads that came from Miami, the Vanini representative. Also from Miami, Osvaldo Barsini. Big long sideboard, this we took off the wall down there. Really wonderful, good large size. We have the keys, needs a bit of a dust down. We have a set of eight of these chairs, nice blue color by Stendig. Came from a local estate and one of my favorite pieces of sale is this really comfortable leopard skin, leopard skin sofa. That's my uh, photographer going backwards into a sh nice camera chandelier up there. Anyway, nice sofa here, down for the really comfortable. And look, you got this good looking girl here alongside you, girl up there. Yep. That's by someone called Siegenthaler, I believe. Okay, we have this set here. One, six. Saren and chairs with a Saren and marble tulip chairs together with the tulip table. Wonderful marble top on it. Sitting on top of this, this is, I believe, after Jean Royer. It's called the pizza table. Really wonderfully red enamel metal. This Tiffany style lamp give you an idea of the size of the shade in the sale. Someone might have dropped it, so a little as is. This here is a part of the Linea Rosette uh, wall unit that we have. As the metal says, you see an image. We took a photograph of it in the estate. Once again, for the mid-century lighting, guys, we have four lamps in one lot. We got. I believe Arta Lucci and other two pairs. So check that out on the site. This is a bit like after Milo Bauman, the sofa with the chrome sides on it. Lots of nice Asian furniture in the sale. Look at this with the enameled plaques on it. This little hardwood cabinet here is very nice. Look at the bronze dragon having a look out. Nicely carved, nicely carved all over. Wonderful patina. Plenty of pedestals in the sale from Greenwich, Connecticut. We have this onyx one. Nice pair of these, also onyx. This wonderful little so settee here with the serpentine front, perfect fabric, nicely carved. This here is a big size, sort of galactic style, you know, glass, the different colors in a bronze mounted. Plenty of alabaster chandeliers in sale, gothic style. This here for the used furniture people, Theodore Alexander. Atop it, nice period from a local uh, New Rochelle estate. Oil and canvas, true mirror, nice gilt and carving, Carlton style desk, hardwood cabinets. This set of chairs here, sort of mid-century Asian modern style. Came to the same house as the Falster. Asian low table, more marble pedestal. I love this wing chair. Not the hottest of stuff at the moment, just really beautiful looking wing chair, great line suit. And it's comfy, this large, look at the amount of rock crystal on this chandelier. Loads of it all over the place. Big lumps area, wonderful condition. It was boxed when it came in, so it's really nice. Pairs of benches, Hans Wenger, nice Murano chandelier. Here we have this Asian hardwood cellarette. Good time of the year for your cellarette. Sits on the stand. Great patina on that too. Moving right along, we're going to show you. This is sort of after Paul McCobb bench. Nice chair here. I believe it's Austrian. AIM style chair in Ottoman. There's a pair of these chairs by Osvaldo Barsini. Came from Miami with guitars and sale. It's nice Gibson Les Paul. We have this uh, Angelica, but beautiful condition, wonderful case. Plenty of Kamer chandeliers. We believe these are Vanini because they came from the Vanini representative. This wonderful chandelier. Look at this with the Lucite curved Lucite on a glass base. Moving right along here, we're going to swing around the front. Look at the size of this art and craft lamp. I believe it's called the Flying Lady Lamp. Came from an estate in New Rochelle, as did this Paul Evans slate top table, both in the same New Rochelle estate. And now from Upper East Side, we have a pair of these beautiful Ralph Lauren leather sofas with a nice down fill sort of paisley fabric. Two, these are one of my favorite things in the sale. These are Victorian. They came from a mansion up in Newburgh, New York. Has the chandelier, two sconces. Some of the shades are as is, but what? Have you ever seen a pair? And once you hear that question, someone is looking for those once in a lifetime. 
Okay, moving right along, we have this Carl Springer style console table. We've glazed porcelain urns. These are a wonderful pair of Ralph Lauren club chairs. Beautiful leather on them, really comfortable. They come with the one ottoman. This here is a sort of after Philip and Kelvin Laverne, or it is Philip and Kelvin Laverne. We're attributing it to a nice pair of tables with the acid etched. This here is an artist called Richard Gashot. Look at the size of this very great Americana with the flags. Flagworks, it's called. Flag Day Flagworks. Okay, moving right along. Some of the stuff is in the next sale. We have uh, this table by after Jean Royer. Nice enamel metal, one below it. This sofa here is George Smith, signed George Smith. This set of sconces goes with a wonderful mid-century chandelier, so it's a chandelier and the sconces. This sculpture is by Alfred Boucher. Just perfect patina and a good large size. Swinging along the side tables you'll see down there, Steve. These, I believe, are by Holly Hunt. Hans Wengener chairs. Here's the other Ralph Lauren. This uh, slate top table here came with the same space as the uh, Geo Ponte singer in the front, I believe it's by Bertha Schaefer. Nice mid-century fire screen. Look at this wonderful and large Murano glass chandelier. Really, really killer. Nice big heavy bronze chandelier with the glass fruit hanging off it. Contemporary sofa. We have a sofa and a little settee. More side tables. This beautiful leather upholstered, but leather cushioned uh, bench here is by Baker. This one here is Ralph Lauren. These are interesting. We set of three of these. Andy Warhol. Uh, little rugs. Here's the other absolutely great and comfortable Ralph Lauren here. We have a pair of these chairs. Nice with the original fabric in the day they would have gone bananas for these. This mirror here came from the Hamptons. Nice uh, carved with the cherubs and the shell on top. If you need it's great. Plenty of sconces in sale. These look like Caldwell style. This chandelier came from a local French man's estate. So I would imagine it's probably French, but good large size. It came with the same with the Trumo mirror. More alabaster chandeliers, Asian hardware furniture. This up here is by Francoise Abrams. Came from the Hamptons, signed. Really great looking piece. Can't lift it, but uh, came right up from there. Mid-century chair and ottoman. This table down here is a bar in between, sort of after Willie Rizzo. See, we've got lots of Chanel and fur coats, so be watching the sale. Hopefully Whitney covers them. Chanel handbags a lot. Over here, we're gonna just skim you over here and you're gonna photograph in there, Steve. Mid-century table, chrome chairs and ottoman, swivel chairs, hardwood. We got chandeliers, we're gonna rip past these clothes here. We're getting near the finish line now. These uh, set of chairs we attributed to Osvaldo Borsini because they came from Miami, as did this great table with the metal base on it. Let's pull this out so as you can see it. See it down here with the metal base and the wooden trestle. This carved demi lune console table came in just a couple of days ago. It has a really great carved mirror. We have this Russian mirror. We have sconces, Chippendale style mirrors. This is the contemporary settee, tamer chandeliers. We even have an 18th century chest on stand over there. We have baker's racks. You name it, we have it. So don't miss this sale. It's on Sunday, June the 30th, but you can come in and preview any time now if you have something particular to see. Wonderful art, great collection from Roslyn. So we're looking forward to seeing you June the 30th at the sale. Also, we're live online if you want to bid on the phones are live online. See you then, thank you. Hi and welcome to our Asian Arts video preview of the June 30th auction. We'll begin here with this pair of tall Chinese enamel decorated tendons with Rui scepters. You can see they are enamel decorated throughout and with an impress stamp to the underside. Really quite nice, came in on one of our walk and Wednesday appraisal days. And here we have a yellow ground Chinese vase with bats and Rui pendants. Really quite nice, recessed underside. And skipping over to a piece of Japanese art, we have this plate with figure of a monster. Really quite nice. It is signed lower right. And here is the underside at three to 500. 
This is a Chinese Fami Rose, one of my favorite lots in the sale vase of children against a yellow ground. There is an underglazed blue mark to the underside at four to 600, came from a Long Island estate. A late addition to this auction is this pair of carved guanyins on carved wood bases alongside this pair of blue and white enamel decorated bowls, peach blossom and bass to the interior and you can see that they are signed to the underside. Silver lidded box with a hard stone cover, really quite nice at three to five hundred. Two carved pendants, one of a horse and one of a turtle. And moving on to another attendant with a Rui scepter. This is individually lauded and again enamel decoration throughout. Here is the underside with a small impressed mark. Really quite nice. Chinese blue and white brush pot. Again, really quite nice with figures here. Here's the underside. From a New Jersey estate, we have this inkstone with rabbits and bamboo. This is an interesting lot on the sale. This is again Chinese, a little bit more contemporary, and it is a, piece, a slice of agate, and it is referencing a duck pond. So there's little carnelian ducks, jade lily pads, gilt silver reeds with keshi pearl accents, and it is in this beautiful display case. And this is estimated at three to five hundred from again on the Long Island estate. Chinese blue and white chrysanthemum bowl or dish, six character mark to the underside. This is a Chinese Fengua vase, really quite nice with this purple glaze. Here is the underside with a mark here. And here we have another chrysanthemum vase, and this is probably Ming Dynasty, so nice age to this piece. And you can just see throughout, there's some inconsistencies that really indicate the age. And here's the underside, it has been drilled as a lamp, and it is accompanied by this carved wood stand with Rui legs. Four Chinese Fami Rose cups with stem bases, floral decoration. Here is the mark to the underside. Two pieces of carved jade together. We have an archer's ring and a belt buckle, so really quite nice. And moving on to a 20th century Chinese enamel decorated plaque. It is signed to the upper left hand corner and it has two figures, one on horseback. So again, really quite nice. Two pieces of blue and white Chinese. So we have a lidded jar of prunus, and then we have this wonderful vase displaying warriors and a garden pavilion with trees and a rocky landscape. Gilt bronze deity. So really quite interesting. Multiple arms, a crown, and multiple heads. And it is standing on two figures. Here's the reverse, and here is the underside. This is an interesting collection of cups. These represent the 12 months. So again, they are Chinese and it is Fami Rose. So you can see the calligraphy and marks here. And then each cup represents a different month. Here is the blue mark to the underside and each cup displays a different flower. So it's really quite beautiful and they are all together. So it is a complete set. Here we have a carved jade plaque in a table screen, again from a Long Island estate. If you can just see the carving here, I'm kind of rock back and forth so you can see the depiction. And here we have a carved agate cup with figural handles and rings on a carved wood stand. We have two pieces of Chinese Fami Rose or Rose Medallion of Ladies. So here is the cup, really quite nice enamel decoration and is accompanied by this dish or underplate. So again, here you go. One of my favorite lots in the sale is this Japanese in row. So you can see the lacquered in row, gilt decoration, mother of pearl inlaid. It is signed here. And here's the reverse and it's a nice unusually large size. Three pieces of Chinese porcelain. So we have this beautiful Fami Rose bowl of birds and flowers. Here's the mark to the underside. And again, additional calligraphy here. And this lidded bowl with peach blossoms, bats, and the symbol, uh, and the shoe symbol of longevity. So here we go. Here is the underside with a six character mark. Additional images are available on our website. And this beautiful red bowl with flowers. And here's the mark to the underside. And so we're just gonna back up for one moment because these are three individually lotted painted Chinese frames. So here's one of fish. We have beautiful signature here. And these are all from the same estate. We also have a birds and flowers example. 
also signed in multiple places, and a landscape. Each of these fan paintings are estimated at 300 to 500, and they all come from a Scarsdale estate. And from one of our Walk-In Wednesday appraisal days, this is a large Chinese, probably Republic period, Fami Rose bowl or punch bowl. So you can see the figural depiction with, to the interior, the floral surround, here is the underside. Um, some imperfections, but these were done in the making. And this is estimated at three to 500. Chinese Fami Rose punch bowl or Rose medallion punch bowl, Chinese export. Um, extensive repairs, but it's really quite nice. Came from a Long Island estate. And it's accompanied by this little iron red lidded box with a landscape to the lid signed to the underside. Really quite nice, the two pieces are together. So here we have again a Chinese Fami Rose bowl. So we have a peacock to the interior, scholars items to the surround. The exterior of the bowl is decorated in iron red bamboo. Really quite nice. I'm just going to hold this for a moment so you can see this cinnabar style low table. It's really quite nice. Carved really quite nicely. So it's just a nice lacquered table. Um, really beautiful to display things on. And this is estimated at four to six hundred. And down below we have a collection of five plates. So these plates are all in one grouping. So we have enamel decorated Chinese, bats and shoe symbols. We have a Wiseman, two examples of these plates. So they are Wiseman seated beneath pine trees with peach blossoms. And then we have this kind of birds and flowers vase, or I'm so sorry, birds and flowers plate here. And those are all together. And then we have here three bowls. So we have two blue and white with dragons against a Rui cloud and wave base or ground. And then we have this yellow scurfito bowl with peach blossoms. This is one of a pair. So we have a pair of these barrel form Chinese Fami Rose garden seats. And you can see the ladies depicted in various scenes and these two are together. This is really quite nice, so we're moving on to some furniture. Um, this is a Chinese stand, but what re really makes this so nice is this bronze dragon, just kind of cascading out of this opening. Um, beautiful carvings here with the Rui pendants. Really quite nice, the key is present, and it's really just a nice size um, and beautifully created. Large pair of Chinese Fami Rose vases, yellow ground, birds and flowers decoration but really quite nice. I'm just gonna take this down so that you can get a better look at this cloisonne table. Um, so again, a Chinese low table and it has these cloisonne plaques inset. So there are um, cranes and the twin fish, but really quite nice. Um, and there's three plaques, estimated at 600 to 900. And moving on to a collection of Japanese prints. Um, so you can just take a look here. There's some snow scenes, mainly landscapes. Um, and this is one of two large groupings of Japanese prints in the sale. All of the details, all of the artist information and the name of the prints are available on our website. So I suggest taking a look there and there are some additional Japanese prints in a separate lot. And then we're going to end our collection of Asian arts for the June 30th auction with this Chinese reverse painted on glass portrait of a woman seated reading um, with a little man in a canoe in the background, really quite nice. This is estimated at four to 600. And that wraps it up for our June 30th auction. And we hope to see you there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to share with you all the items for our upcoming June 30th sale. Let me begin with carpets. And the very first carpet I'd like you to feast your eyes upon is this exceptional Kerman style rug. It features an intricate design and vibrant color characteristics of traditional Kerman craftsmanship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm offering two beautiful Bokhara rugs in this lot. Each rug showcases a classic Bokhara design with rich colors and intricate patterns. This is one of two in this lot, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to go to ClarkNY.com to view the other rug. Just look at this stunning Chinese Emma Gardner rug. It's a unique contemporary design with vibrant colors reflecting Emma Gardner's signature style. All right, a truly palisized Kerman carpet here, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is a timeless piece that will add elegance to any space. Don't miss out on this exquisite rug. 
Look at this Art Deco Chinese rug, ladies and gentlemen. It showcases bold geometric patterns and vibrant colors, characteristic of the Art Deco style. Here's an antique Herman carpet. It's a timeless piece that will add elegance to any space. Don't miss this exceptional find. Another stunning Art Deco Chinese rug. This is a unique piece that adds a touch of sophistication and vintage charm to any room. Take a look at this finely knotted rug that features vibrant colors and exceptional craftsmanship. Folks, I even have a Kazakh rug. Look at the bold geometric patterns and rich colors reflecting the traditional Kazakh design. Look at the stunning vintage carpet. It's sure to add character and elegance to any space. This last rug that I'm going to share with you is a perfect blend of modern artistry and traditional craftsmanship, ideal for enhancing any room. Just look at that central medallion. All right, let's move right along to horology, ladies and gentlemen. The very first clock I'd like to share with you is right up here. It's part of a three-piece garniture set. Just look at that beautiful gilding. What a clock, ladies and gentlemen. Yet again, another three-piece garniture set. Look at this beautiful blue in the porcelain. What an exquisite piece. Take a look at the putty on top. Just beautiful. Moving right along, what do I have? Yet an absolutely exquisite Tiffany & Co. New York sign Chelsea Shipspells clock housed within a beautiful brass case on plinth. Flanked to the left, what do I have? A Barbarian Black Forest carved clock. That's absolutely old world craftsmanship, ladies and gentlemen, just look at that. Behind it, yet again, an absolutely beautiful gilt clock with a porcelain dial and porcelain accents. Just beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am standing behind one of the most exquisite three-piece French clock garniture sets I have ever seen. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this garniture set features a central rotating annular dial with Roman numeral hour markings encircling an enamel decorated globe and adorned with gilt pooty and a finial accents. And adorned with a gilt pooty finial and accents. This clock is supported by three nude bronze beauty figures embellished with gilt laurel decorations. Flanked on the left and right side by three light candelabras. Now this one right here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of my favorites. This hand-built chinoiserie cased clock depicts a babushka right here on the top. This will spin and rotate and it is exquisite. What a fun piece to play with. I've never seen one before and I doubt I'll ever see another one. Moving right along, take a look at these cameras. Not only do I have one Leica with an incredibly rare torpedo viewfinder, but I have a Roloflex. And what do I have beside that? Yet again, another Leica. I can't believe it myself. What a great collection of ca uh, cameras that I have here this time to offer to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving along to watches, just take a look at this. I have not one, but two beautiful pocket watches. One fitted with a fob chain, 14 karat gold. Right over here, I got a beautiful stainless steel vintage Rolex Datejust. Next to that, another vintage Rolex, unbelievable. Right here, what could it be? A very interesting pie pan Rolex dial here with diamond hour markers. Moving right along, a Bulova Accutron with an 18 karat yellow gold case, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful watch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. Two Kazookas, a Suba, an assorted Japanese sword parts. Some of them are even signed, ladies and gentlemen. This should be a great lot for collectors out there. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud to offer you the following. I don't even know what to call this hoard. 
How about the King Midas Horde, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, the King Midas Horde, because I've got everything across the board here. I've got Austrian gold coins, Canadian maple leaves. I've got French gold coins. I've got Austrian ducats. Look at this grouping here. I got 11 ducats in one grouping. To the left, what do I have? Singaporean gold coins, ladies and gentlemen. This is 1.9 ounces of gold. Right over here, Swiss francs. Swiss franc gold coins. It's unbelievable how many gold coins I have and how many nations are represented. Right over here, ladies and gentlemen, I have Exonumia. I've even got an Olympic participation medal to offer you here. This is a German reconstruction medal from uh, post-World War I. Absolutely exquisite. What do I have here? A 1986 Chinese gold panda one ounce coin. I literally have everything under the sun. Moving right along to numismatics, welcome to Morgantown, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, Morgan Silver Dollars, 26 in this grouping. I even got an eight over seven tail feathers here. This is absolutely exquisite. And over here to your left, what do I have? American junk silver, just take a look at that. From Washington quarters to half dollars, Kennedy half dollars, walking half dollars, from Washington quarters to walking liberty to mercury dimes to Franklin halves you name it it's in there and what do I have here the European equivalent and Canadian that's right I have a ton of absolutely amazing Austrian silver coins and Canadian silver coins I look forward to seeing each and every single one of you here on June 30th right here at Clark Auction Gallery, beginning at 10 a.m. Happy bidding. Hi there, welcome to Clark Auction's June 30th Fine Art Auction Preview. I'm gonna share with you some of the highlights and the interesting paintings, I think, and works of art in this sale. I'm gonna start first with this lovely work done in 1936 by Max Arthur Cohen uh, of uh, offloading a boat. Um, Cohen was born in England but emigrated to the United States and by the 1930s was working for the WPA um, project and here we have you know typical 1930s fantastic work and an interesting fact about Cohen is after the war he started to get into silk screening and that became one of his prominent uh, uh, interest and he was the teacher of Andy Warhol uh, and so now we move on to below the Cohen this fabulous work in the 40s by Guy Wiggins uh, this is called the night shift and it was done in 1943 when Guy Wiggins and about 20 other artists were working in Deep River Connecticut at the Platte Reed piano factory making gliders for the war effort. And this is estimated at eight to 12,000 in our sale. We're now moving along to another exciting work by the American artist Leon Dabo, uh, the tonalist artist. And this was probably done in the like, 1920s. And it's a typical Dabo, and it's fabulous, fresh to the market. You can see it's got this lovely couple on the, the beach and the linear aspect of Dabo's. Um, some boats and really an exciting painting and really could use a clean it's got a few damages but we've got it conservatively estimated at 8 to 12,000 we're now moving along the wall here to a contemporary artist named Janet Fish uh, she is known for doing a lot of reflections in objects like glass and this was done in 1974 when she was at the Skohegan uh, colony up in Maine. And this is estimated at four to 6,000, uh, a lovely pastel. We need to move on to a contemporary work by the British artist David Gamble. This is Andy Warhol's study uh, in his house. Gamble was commissioned by Sotheby's in 1987 to photograph his uh, Warhol's townhouse before their sale. And Gamble, being an artist, uh, has incorporated his pop art version of Andy in this wonderful uh, photographic work. Moving above, we go to the South African artist, 
uh, um, what is his name, John Meyer. We actually have two works by Meyer. This one was done in 89. And as you can see, this is a lower east side view um, uh, by Meyer. And this is estimated at six to 9,000. And moving along, we're going to somebody that we see a lot here, Hunt Sloman. And this is actually Carmen Miranda done in 19, or sorry, in 2001. And like Hunt always does, he has layers of paint and he also scores and creates this web-like texture to this painting. And we have an estimate of four to 6,000 for Carmen Miranda. We're now gonna move around to the other side of uh, the front room. And we have this wonderful large work by Tadashi Asoma. He's a Wally Finley gallery artist and born in Japan, but worked in Paris and New York. And by the 1980s, he moved to Garrison, New York, and he really expresses himself uh, in the nature and color of upstate New York. And this was done in 1995. We're now moving along the wall, but I'd like to focus on a small painting by the Italian artist, um, Renato Gutuso. Uh, Gutuso was from Sicily and he was the uh, uh, founder of the New Art Front movement in Italy. And I believe this is probably from his home uh, area of Sicily on the coast, maybe done in the summer of 1950. Above that, we have a Samuel Coleman, the American artist, and we have this lovely water view. And you can see how well that is done, and that is estimated at eight to 1,200. One of the real highlights, I think, of, the sh of our uh, auction is this work by the Tanzanian artist, Sam Joseph Nitro. This is called The Pool, and this was exhibited in the Merton D. Simpson Gallery in 1960. Uh, Nitro was trained at the Slade in London, and he's the first Tanzanian artist uh, ever to exhibit overseas from Tanzania in London and, and at the Simpson Gallery in 1960. And also, he's the first African artist to enter uh, the MoMA Museum's collection. Finally, I'd like to kind of mention over here, we also have a pair of William Trost Richard uh, drawings of some twilight landscapes. And these are estimated at two to 3,000. Here we are now in the main gallery, and as usual, we have a great cross-section and diversity of prints and oils. As we track along, we've got uh, Leonard Nierman, uh, we've got some more realist landscapes. Uh, we've got large uh, work by a Scandinavian artist of London. And, and we have a work by Alice Dalton Brown, The View from the Porch. And we have three works by the artist uh, James Schmidt. Uh, he was a professor and artist in Illinois. So we have these lovely Midwestern views. We have this lovely large work by the illustrator Howard Chandler Christie. It's really a wonderful uh, Grisai-like uh, Grisai work by the artist, probably done in the 1920s. And it's a really fabulous work. And we have it estimated at two to 3,000. Tracking along, we've got 19th century landscapes, views of Venice and lovely figures. And we even have a good selection of 19th and early 20th century uh, print posters. And now I'm gonna end up with this really interesting sketch by the contemporary designer, Gio Ponti. It seems to be that it, this is a rather rare sketch of some type of, of floral arrangement object. Um, and then we also have a good selection as usual of Vincent D. Smith's. Uh, the African-American artist in which we have several works done in the 1980s that were inspired by some of his trips to Africa. And with that, 
I think I'll leave you to explore our catalog online at clarkny.com or come into the auction three days prior for the actual preview to see all the great things. And if you do have any questions, feel free to give a call or email. And like I said, the sale is gonna be uh, Sunday the 30th of June and good luck at the auction. Hi and welcome to the June 30th auction preview of Silver Jewelry and Couture. We're going to be in here with this pair of Sasson Sterling urns with beautiful stag head handles. Repousé work throughout, really so beautiful, heavy and silver weight. The estimate is two to three thousand. Here's a French silver mounted claret jug and then we have a wonderful collection of Gucci deskware decorative objects. So this is one grouping, all Gucci. Gucci cup, Gucci desk clock, Gucci pair of nautical themed candlesticks with the rope twist, and then we have two individually lotted pairs of dogs. So we have a pair of spaniels and we have a pair of maybe labs. Unfortunately this guy had a little accident and has a broken leg, but each pair is individually lotted. And then we have a Gucci wood lined box, which is right here. And another collection is this grouping of cups. So we have a beautiful Williams Sterling cup. This is an 84 Imperial Silver Niello Silver cup. This is a Baltimore Silver Repousé cup, really beautifully crafted. Typical Baltimore Repousé work. And then this is a Tiffany & Co Christening cup, really quite lovely, each estimated at three to 500. And then we have a really wonderful silver frame mirror, bird and flower motif, Rabinovich sterling easel back frame. This is a wonderful Florentine lace pattern flatware service, sterling, followed by a Reed and Barton sterling tea service, four pieces, really quite nice and good condition. Moving on to some decorative objects, we have these three hinged cases together, really wonderful art deco, um, some enamel floral decoration, and then a beautiful silver compact. This is one grouping. Second grouping from a new Rochelle estate is this collection of Austrian and Russian Niello silver boxes. This one's really quite nice with the sled. Really beautiful collection at 400 to 600. Collection of Tiffany from one of our Walk and Wednesday appraisal days. We have this collection of beautiful spoons. So you can see here the pattern. They are monogrammed alongside this hand mirror and all Tiffany. Now moving on to jewelry. We have a collection of cuff bracelets and one ring or a pair of earrings, I'm sorry. So we have a pair of earrings, beautiful turquoise, turquoise and coral, and then a beautiful bicolor gold cuff bracelet. From a Hollis, New York estate, we have this wonderful pearl necklace with a Mughal style carved, probably emerald pendant with a pearl drop. Really wonderful. Tiffany cuff, cuff link and stud set, 14 karat gold and onyx. We have this Italian 18 karat gold and enamel cross pendant. This is a wonderful carved memento mori snuff bottle with the skull and crossbones. Another collection from our Walk and Wednesday appraisal day, we have 14 karat gold and, and carved stone. We have this wonderful little antique opal ring with seed pearls and this silver hand mirror with a coral cabochon. This is Victorian high karat gold with turquoise beading. It is a locket and it is in very good condition, especially for its age, which would be late 19th century. Tiffany and Company 14 karat gold jurettier or buckle form bracelet with sapphires and diamonds in a Tiffany hinged box. We have this really wonderful, one of my favorite lots in the sale is this 18 karat gold oversized cross pendant with emerald cabochons and ruby accents, really beautiful Maltese style cross. Um, we are going to jump over to this necklace only because it's going to be the start of a collection of Ed Wiener jewelry. So this is Ed Wiener necklace with a pearl accent. This is an Ed Wiener 18 karat gold ring with diamond accents. It is missing one diamond. Another 18, another Ed Wiener 14 karat gold modernist form ring. And all these are, although these are unmarked, it is not completely unusual for Ed Wiener sterling jewelry to be unmarked. Um, this is from the same state and I do believe the, that it is with good reason to attribute these to Ed Wiener as well. And these are together at two to 300. So here we have this 12 karat gold bangle and it is accented by a Great Britain gold sovereign coin. Jumping forward, this is a Thai gilt metal and coral 
deity necklace or a collar form necklace, oversized in, in size um, and in great condition. This is a 14 karat gold book form match strike. So there's this large tassel, but then you can see here that this opens up and that's how you would use it. So really quite sweet from the same estate as our Ed Wiener jewelry. This is a gold mesh coin purse on a 16 karat gold chain later added. This is an 18 karat gold articulated bracelet. Again, look at the quality here, beautiful movement. This is a Cartier bicolor rose and green gold bracelet. Really wonderful, 1,000 to 1,500. This is a Belle Epoque diamond necklace on a sterling chain. This is Victorian Etruscan Revival bracelet, really wonderful, great design, really good condition for what it is. There are some condition issues, but think of the age, it's all there and beautifully done. This is Cartier, so this is how it would be worn, probably on a pinky, I would imagine. Diamond accents, multi-strand beaded ring. Really quite nice. This is attributed to H. Stern from our new Rochelle estate and it is onyx and diamonds. We're going to jump back over here just so we go in order. This is a platinum ring with a central prong set emerald surrounded by marquee cut diamonds. Really quite beautiful at 12 to 1500. This is a 14 karat gold oversized amethyst with diamond accents, a modernist 18 karat gold and salmon coral ring. This is a collection of am amethyst cabochon jewelry. So we have a beautiful Art Nouveau style bracelet with these amethyst cabochon earrings, a collection of pearl jewelry. So we have Mabe pearl earrings accented by diamonds, an 18 karat gold and cashy pearl ring, and a 14 karat gold pearl and diamond ring. We're going to jump forward. This is a 14 karat gold chain suspending a 10 karat gold and diamond heart form pendant. This is modernist 14 karat gold cross pendant on a gold chain. This is a 14 karat gold necklace suspending a yellow sapphire slightly over one carat and diamond accent pendant so sweet um, this is a platinum and diamond necklace with a single bezel set pair faceted ruby collection of gold bangle bracelets so there's 14 karat and 18 karat and then this is a beautiful whisker or i believe these are whiskers um, bracelet. So this collection is together at 700 to 900. Jumping forward, this is a collection of gold. So we have 18 karat gold, 14 karat gold, Italian. This is really wonderful with the diamond accents. This is gilt silver. We have a pair of Judith Ripka 18 karat gold and Carnelian Intaglio earrings. This is beautiful 18 karat gold Italian dragonfly brooch oversized. Look at the size in comparison to my hand with multi shade green enamel work pearl eyes with diamond accents. 18 karat gold bracelet and earrings. But you can see it kind of has this Chanel look to the double C pendants here inlaid with diamonds and they are peridots and citrines, three to 5,000. A pair of signed bug form brooches, one with rubies, one with sapphires. This is a Jose Hess 14 karat gold ring with over two carats of diamonds, but this ring is just stunning. Look at this ring on. It's just such a statement. It's beautiful. Absolutely love this ring. Moving on to a 14 karat gold modernist ring with diamond accents. Again, a beautiful statement ring. This is emerald and diamond ring. Really quite beautiful. Nice diamonds. Great quality. 14 karat gold bracelet with colored gems and diamonds. Again, another statement piece. Here we have a 14, 18 karat gold ring with a point a 40 point diamond to the center and rib design to the shank. We have this wonderful diamond ring, small diamonds that add up to quite a statement. So really quite sparkly and beautiful. Um, these two pieces are individually lauded, but they are by the same artist. So it is Armani with a Y. So it's A-R-M-A-N-Y. 18 karat gold with sapphires and diamonds in X form pendants, really quite nice. Tiffany & Co ring with a central Mabe pearl in the Tiffany box, really quite beautiful. Um, and then we have this torsade style necklace, but what makes this so nice is this kind of David Webb style 18 karat gold clasp with the diamond accents, but just really just wonderful quality to the carving. And this is quite nice. Okay, so we have this 18 karat gold elongated chain suspending a Mexican peso gold mounted coin. Nice elongated chain would look great on a black dress for the summer. Collection of pearl jewelry. So we have this brooch, a seed pearl horse, and a seed pearl oval form 
brooch collection of jewelry that came in on one of our walk on wednesday appraisal day we have this garnet ring i believe that this is some sort of a later marriage of parts we have this probably chalcedony i would say i could see some banding to it um this is i believe this to be I can't remember the name of it, but it's beautiful and all the details are on our website. We have this carved rock crystal leaf with a diamond accent. So we have lots of bracelets in the sale and I can't possibly remember all the gold carats for you. So I'm just gonna point out the details. These three bracelets are together. One has lapis pendants, pearl jewelry grouping, two pearl bracelets and a pearl and diamond pendant collection of bracelets so we have enamel we have jade and enamel deco we have this gold bracelet accented by multicolor beads we have a multi-strand bracelet with pearls we have this chain link bracelet chain link bracelet chain link bracelet chain link necklace going to jump back this these are david yerman with sapphires really quite nice in this cable design we have these two pieces of jewelry with moonstones. So we have a 15 karat moonstone and turquoise bracelet. And then this wonderful retro or vintage moonstone floral or foliate form brooch. This is 18 karat gold starfish with a single diamond pendant. This is semen sheps. So really quite nice, great for the summer. So this is frosted crystal with gold rope twist. Two 14 karat gold rings. These are faux diamonds, and this is a colored gem and diamonds. We have a collection of Mickey Moto. So these are two pair of 18 karat gold Mickey Moto earrings, one with a single band of pearls, one with a double strand of pearls. Mickey Moto double strand graduated pearl necklace. Collection of natural stones. So we have malachite earrings, a carved angel skin rose ring, and a pair of Italian salmon coral earrings. This is one of the stars of our show. This is a Barry Kisselstein cord, emerald cut diamond, and 18 karat gold ring. This is absolutely stunning. Um, really just so beautiful. The architectural elements to this ring and also the name of the ring is architecture. Um, so really beautiful at six to nine thousand. So these two pieces have diamonds that are currently at GIA. So this is a wonderful platinum cocktail ring. So all these marquee diamonds and in the center is a 1.03 round brilliant cut diamond. Should be back from GIA shortly. Um, this is 14 karat gold and this is the home to a 1.88 karat round brilliant cut diamond. Also will be back from GIA shortly. 14 karat gold box chain and this is a inscribed banded agate pendant. So this is some sort of uh, Persian inscription here, but really quite nice and unusual. This is a wonderful platinum and diamond eternity band collection of turquoise jewelry. So we have this near pair of turquoise and gold bracelets and a turquoise brooch. This is Victorian gold. This is another wonderful link of gold bracelet. We have these two gold link bracelets. We have these two gold bracelets with what is presumably emerald beads. This is a wonderful multi-strand pearl bracelet with an amethyst and pearl clasp. This is absolutely wonderful. Um, a great heavy link. This is 18 karat gold. This is deco white enamel with onyx and pearl accents. This is 14 karat gold, but again, a really beautiful scrolling design, unusual. We have this gold chain link bracelet, and this is a pendant that homes is a home for the serenity prayer. And this is a gold link bracelet with a gold nugget. Another wonderful gold link bracelet. This is a, another wonderful bracelet with emerald drops and emerald accents. 14 karat gold strawberry brooch with sapphires and rubies. These are 14 karat gold door knocker earrings with diamond accents. This is an Israeli ring and it is 18 karat gold with emeralds and diamonds. It is signed. I am unable to make out who the maker is, but it is signed and it is a great modernist piece. Jumping back, we have this 14 karat gold chain and it is the home to a 14 karat gold filigree pendant with smoky quartz, which can be a pendant or a brooch. 14 karat gold enamel and old European cut diamond ring in the form of a flower. This diamond is slightly less than half a carat. This is a pair of Barry Kisselstein cord caviar 18 karat gold and diamond earrings. This is a wonderful 14 karat gold serpent form or snake form ring with enamel decoration. 
This is absolutely beautiful. It is a, I believe this is Mexican. It says that it's ambar. So it's A-M-B-A-R on this little pamphlet that comes with it. But it's some form of amber gold mounted with this wonderful kind of face or head um, and this is estimated at 400 to 600. We have this collection of rings with central stones, 14 karat bicolor ring. We have this collection of bug form brooches, really quite sweet. So we have sapphires, rubies, and diamonds. Another collection of rings with the details online. This one is the Chinese ring, so high karat Chinese gold. This one is a signet ring. Th these are two 18 karat gold brooches, so we have a clover and a dragonfly. This is a 14 karat gold Victorian bypass form snake ring with one ruby and one diamond. This is just sweet as can be, perfect for summer. It's, I believe, 14 karat gold, but double check me online with pearls and a central diamond. This is a collection of objects that Whitney likes, is what we call this grouping. Uh, we have a snuff box, we have this little figure, maybe Grand Tour, another little plaque. This is a beaded purse, but it's just so beautiful and it's dated 1884, it does have some condition issues, but who doesn't appreciate this micro beading? Just look at the details. This is a gold chain with a Victorian locket that is monogrammed and there is a locket verso with this guy. This is a 19th century snuff box of agate and then this beautiful portrait of this lady. So this is a signed snakeskin purse with gold mounts. It is estimated at three to five hundred. And what I think really makes this so interesting is that the history is written down on this letter to the recipient. And it also holds all of the little calling cards that were given to the woman when she went to all these fabulous parties. Um, so all the information of the family history is here and it's in really good condition. It's just like a nice little piece of history. So, this is again one of the stars of our show. This is Jeff Cantra. So it is a single strand pearl necklace with a 14 karat gold ball form clasp, but what's really important here is the tanzanite itself and the diamond surround. So we have over nine carats of tanzanite mounted in platinum with over eight carats of multi-cuts of diamonds. Just look at this shine and sparkle here. This is such a statement. It can be worn as a brooch or a pendant, so it's really quite versatile. And this was made by Jeff Cantra. It is signed. Here is the information on the Tanzanite itself. And then this is an appraisal given by Jeff Cantra where he evaluated the replacement for $40,000. Um, so this is here to sell at five to 7,000. Quite beautiful. Remember the Tanzanite mines are now closed and this is a beautiful example of Tanzanite. Moving on to couture in the sale, which we have quite a bit of. Um, we will start here. Here's a purse grouping. So we have a Gucci vintage purse and then two coach bags, but really quite nice examples of coach. This is cute as can be. So is this one. And it is sitting inside of this really wonderful Louis Vuitton steamer trunk with nice inserts, unusual inserts, and it's in very good condition. This is estimated at two to 3,000. So we're going to move on to some more purses. So from a Long Island estate, we have this wonderful white for summer Chanel purse with resin handle and applied double C and this hang tag from the same estate, another white leather Chanel purse with the gold chain link and leather straps. So two straps you can see here in very good condition. Um, this is a collection from New Rochelle. So this is a bunch of couture that we have here. This is Gucci, really unusual, black leather with the silver and red and black enamel. A Paloma Picasso belt. This is Fendi, this is alligator, an Hermes scarf. And then we have a collection of vintage Louis Vuitton. So two Louis Vuitton bags, some Louis Vuitton pouches, sunglasses, keys, etc. This is a Louis Vuitton Eclipse watch case with the Louis Vuitton dust jacket. I don't know if I'm going to be able to open this, so you just look online to see the details on this, but it's in very good condition at three to 500. This is absolutely gorgeous. Chanel patchwork purse with the black leather and gold chain double straps um, in very, very good condition. This is estimated at 2,500 to 3,500 and it is beautiful and an unusual example at that. So then if we look behind us here, we have a collection from New Rochelle of couture clothing. So we have furs, we have lots of furs. This is Louis Farad, 
Um, this is, I believe these are all purchased at Neiman Marcus. And this is a Sorbara, and this was purchased at Neiman Marcus. This is Burberry. Um, not sure who all of these are, but really beautiful examples. This one is Fendi, and it has the fur trim. It's a shawl, and it comes with two additional shawls. We have more fur. This is absolutely stunning. So this is suede with the fox trim. Um, this is green lamb. This is Izzy Miyake, and there's four pieces here of this clothing line. We have some embroidered clothing. This is lamb and chinchilla. These are embellished jackets that are just beautiful for a night out. This is Chanel. So we have lots of Chanel. Chanel, Chanel. This is Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. Surprise, here's Chanel again. So lots of Chanel clothing. Um, this is not so sure. This is just so sweet and it, everything was kept well. Um, let's see, this is Yves Saint Laurent. This is, I'm not so sure, but if anyone can deny that this is probably what Cher and Clueless wore um, for all the Clueless fans out there, but it's beautiful. This is Oscar de la Renta. Um, this is, I believe, Valent uh, this is another maker. But there's lots of couture in the sale. Uh, we hope that you check it out. The sale is June 30th and we hope to see you there.